When you need to change the IP address of a Nexia device, depending on the current IP address of your computer, it might be quicker and easier just to change that IP address using RS-232 commands. To demonstrate that, I'm going to use a piece of software called PuTTY. If you have Windows XP, you can use HyperTerminal. In XP or Vista or 7, you can use PuTTY, you can use TerraTerm, you can use the tool that Extron produces. They all work. You just need some way to send serial commands over RS-232. In this case, my USB to serial adapter happens to be on COM port number 2. The default baud rate for Nexia devices is 38400. I want to go to the terminal page and turn on local echo so I can see what I'm typing. Otherwise, when I'm typing, I won't see it. I'll only see the responses from the device. And just to make things a little bit more clear on the screen, I'm going to turn on implicit character turns and line feeds. That's not required at all. If I hit open, a serial window appears on my screen, and I can send commands to the Nexia device. The first thing I'm going to do is hit the Enter key. I get back error syntax. That's a good sign. That tells us we actually have communication between our computer and the Nexia device. Now that we have communication, we need to enter the command to change the IP address. When entering commands into a RS-232 session, it's very important that you not backspace or make any spelling errors. It's also important that everything be in all capital letters. The command we're looking for is set zero IP address and then the new IP address. In this case, we'll change it to 192.168.1.103. Now when I send that command, I get an error. The reason I get that error is because there's a configuration currently running in my Nexia device. If my Nexia device is running and processing audio, I'm not allowed to change the IP address because that will interrupt the audio. So before I can change the IP address, I have to clear the device. I have to remove the configuration from inside the device. That's done with clear zero dev config. Takes a second to process and I get a plus OK. That Nexia device just stopped passing audio. It no longer has a configuration running. So now I can put my set zero IP address 192.168.1.103 command back in. And this time the command is accepted. Now I can also use a get command. Get zero IP ADDR will tell me the current IP address. That's not the IP address that I just set. I just set it to 103. So why is it telling me it's 101? Before the new IP address will work, I have to reboot the device. So I can reach behind the device, pull the power, plug it back in, and reboot it. Or I can do a reboot zero device. That's going to reboot the Nexia device. And when it comes back up, we'll see a status readout of all the settings in the device. There are the current settings in our device. It's now set to 192.168.1.103. We can go ahead and load a configuration and this device is ready for use. This same trick can be used to learn the IP address of any device. If I plug in a serial cable to the back of a Nexia device, open up a connection with that device, and then just power cycle it, when it comes back up, it's going to give me all of that information.